Who was Noah, generation 10 of mankind? Let's use the periodic table of history to explore this question. So here you can see the 6,000 years of history over here on the left. And then you can also see different countries. Let's zoom up to Iceland, and that'll give us some perspective. So here in 1906 to 1912, we see who was the ruler at that time. We can zoom in and out anywhere, but what we're going to do is talk about Noah. He is one of the most exciting and extraordinary figures in the world. He lived through the most technologically advanced part of the pre-flood world. He survived the flood and then had to create a new world order. Let's zoom up to Noah so we can get a better look at who we're talking about. His life bar is right here. I'm changing his color to yellow. And you can see he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth here. So they were so important there in red, blue, and yellow. And if we zoom out, we can see the perspective. Adam's up here. Adam is up here. Noah here. Shem, Ham, and Japheth here. The genealogy and primary text is in Genesis chapter 5. And Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years and begot a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And since we mentioned Lamech there, let's go up to where Lamech is. Lamech is Noah's father, right here, ninth generation. In the book of Jasher, chapter 5, we are given detail of Noah's wife. Noah married Naamah, the daughter of Enoch. In Genesis 5, the text states, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So we can scroll down here and then zoom out so that we can get that perspective. We can review when the first patriarchs had children and then Noah. Adam was 130, Seth 105, Enos 90, Canaan 70, Mahalaleel 65, Jared 162, Enoch 65, Methuselah 187, Lamech 182, and Noah 500. You can see the patriarchs having children at a younger and younger age from Adam to Mahalaleel, but then there's a spike with Jared, goes down with Enoch, and then Methuselah, Lamech pretty high, and then Noah just breaks the mold completely. Jared, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah were older than the other patriarchs when they had children. It would be interesting to know what was going on in the pre-flood world at those times. I will zoom back up here to Noah. In Genesis 6, we read, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. This text indicates Shem, Ham, and Japheth are triplets. I like this idea in reference to racism. Nobody can say they are better than someone else based upon birthright. And even though evolutionism is racist from the start to finish, Scripture states that we are all one blood. In Josephus' Antiquities, the sons were said to have been born a hundred years before the flood, and they are ordered as Shem, Japheth, and Ham, 1556 years after creation. And the flood was 1656 years after creation. The Toltec story has dates of the flood happening 1,716 years after creation. Isn't it interesting that the times are so close and just for your information, the flood in the Hebrew record was approximately 2460 B.C., if we're following the Masoretic text. We can think one way or another about the sons of Noah being triplicates or not. The book of Jasher indicates Japheth to be the firstborn, but since Genesis and Josephus are written to indicate the brothers are triplicates, I wrote the periodic table of history to indicate this. Noah's life is expressed in Genesis 6 through 11, so now we start getting data of what the world is like, and we can resolve some of our own curiosities. So I highly recommend the viewer take a moment to read those chapters. Noah is also expressed in 1 Chronicles, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Matthew, Luke, Hebrews, 1 and 2 Peter. For your clarification, in Matthew 24, Luke 3, and Luke 17, Noah, N-O-A-H, is spelled N-O-E. 
For study purposes, the Apocrypha also mentions Noah in several books. The book of Jasher 534 states, Then Noah took the three daughters of Eliakim, son of Methuselah, for wives, for his sons, as the Lord had commanded Noah. So here, Eliakim is not mentioned in Genesis, and so this is an extra name of a pre-flood character that died before the flood. Now back to Genesis, we read the following in Genesis chapter 6. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. Now, studying a little further and getting a little more resolution, we can go to the book of Jasher, chapter 4. And the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters. And they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relative. And they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men, and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals. So in the book of Jasher and the Antiquities of the Jews, God goes on to command Methuselah and Noah to preach repentance to the world. The book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees gives some characterization to Methuselah as a righteous proponent that followed after God's ways. In the book of Jasher 5.9, And Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men, day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. Noah's helper, Methuselah, died 1656 years after the creation of Adam of the biblical time scale. So this corresponds to the same year as the flood. We always need to remember the book of Jasher, book of Enoch, and the book of Jubilees were not canonized into the Bible. And also remember the Antiquities of the Jews by Josephus was a compilation of Jewish history by Josephus to the Greeks. So we use caution when we get to these resources, but they are interesting to study. If we start studying into secular history, we can reference the Sumerian kings list. We find the seventh listing, Enmendur Anna, was taken to heaven like Enoch. And the eighth listing, Ubara Tutu, is a type of Methuselah. The Sumerian king's list goes on to chronicle a great flood that swept over the earth. Noah might be dwarfed in the Sumerian king's list because of the life of Methuselah here going all the way to the flood. So now that we have a patriarch that lived through the pre-flood world and lived into the post-flood world, we start getting a plethora of information about the Great Flood and other smaller shockwave floods that were a result of the Great Flood. There are records about Noah from the Celts, Greeks, Sumerians, Chaldeans, Assyrians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Hebrews, Egyptians, Bantus, Kushites, Indians, Chinese, Vietnamese, Koreans, Burmese, Polynesians, Mayans, Inuit, Aztec, Toltecs, 
Incas. In China, Sima Xian lived from 145 to 86 BC, and he was the first Chinese historian to attempt a universal history, records of the grand historian. He pieced together a lot of the history of China, and you see deluge stories in this history, going back to Fuxi. These are of the three sovereigns and five emperors of China. We can zoom out so we can see a greater span of history. So we have those flood legends in China. We have the Epic of Gilgamesh. That would be around here. And actually, we can zoom up on that and get a picture of him. There he is, Gilgamesh. He's the fifth king of the Sumerian city of Uruk. And he goes on a quest to find Noah, who is called Zayasudra, or Utnapishtim. Now, Atrahasis is Old Babylonian or Akkadian and names Noah to be Atrahasis. The Enuma Elish is similar to Atrahasis and Iridu Genesis. And these are Sumerian, so they're all around this same area. Uruk and Chaldea and Ur, all these Sumerian cities, they're all thrown together. And they have many records of, say, the Epic of Gilgamesh or the Flood Legend or Iridu Genesis. Oh, we'll have to go out a little bit farther. The Rig Veda, we can talk about that in India. It's the oldest Indian Hindu book. And in this book, Noah is called Manu, the survivor of the flood. Also, India's Mahabharata is one of the chief books of Hinduism as it speaks of the five sons of Pandu. In it, Krishna gives the book of the Bhagavad Gita to the chief Pandu son, and it speaks of the flood of Manu. This makes the flood story the basis for Indian culture, and you can see that Indian culture is right there, very close to when Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth lived. Well, just look at the scope here. Noah's here. Flood happened about right here. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth lived to here, and you start seeing Indian culture Warm right here. To the Chinese Fuhi people, Noah is N U A H or N U H U. In another Chinese myth, the first emperor of China, Fuxi, is married to Nuwa. That is Nuwa, N U W A, is a female god. This Chinese myth is incredible to study since there is a cataclysm between sky and land resulting in the flood. Now, to the Koreans, Noah is Namu Dor Ye Ong. And what I find amazing about this one is Namu, spelled N A M U, is similar to the Indian M A N U, Manu. There is a genealogy of the Hawaiians that goes back to a genealogy that's similar to Genesis. Hawaii would be right here. To the Hawaiians, Noah is Nu U N U U, or Nana Nu. To the Aztecs, Noah is Cox Cox, C O X C O X. In Southeast Asia, Noah's name is Nan Chuang, N A N C H A U N G. In one of the Greek flood records, Noah is called Deucalion. In Norseland, Noah is named Burglemir. Ireland has genealogies that go back to Japheth. The Egyptians have flood legends, the Cushitic people have flood legends, and the Bantu people have flood legends. So this is a fascinating area of study. Josephus lists several books to study in this era. Josephus was a governor general historian about this era. These sources he used were closer to the original dates than we have access to in our modern day because some of them have been destroyed. But Josephus lists many of them, and they are absolutely fascinating to get a hold of, the ones that remained, and many of them do remain. Josephus lists Berosus, who wrote Babyloniaca. He also lists the following, Hieronymus the Egyptian. Hieronymus the Egyptian wrote the Phoenician Antiquities. Manassas, Greek historian of the 3rd century BC, wrote Periplus. Nicholas of Damascus wrote a universal history. Manetho was an Egyptian historian. He wrote the history of Egypt in the 3rd century BC, Egyptiaca. Mochus the Phoenician wrote the Phoenician history. Hestiaus of Perinthus was a Greek student of Plato. 
Hesiod, around 750 to 650 BC, he wrote the Theogony. Hecatius of Abdera was a Greek who wrote the history of Egypt in about 300 BC. Hellenicius of Lesbos was a Greek 5th century writer. It's where we get Atlantis from. Accusilaus was Greek 6th century, wrote many ancient genealogies. Euphorus of Syme the Greek, 400 to 330 BC, wrote a history of Greece. And then around 300 AD in Italy, Eusebius creates a compilation of history and argues that if the flood was real, which he believes it is, then we should discover shells on top of mountains. So an expedition is launched which finds shells on the tops of the mountains, much to the happiness of Eusebius. And we have found much geological evidence since then, like clams on top of the Andes. We see sedimentary mud layers covering 70% of the earth, giving evidence of the great flood of Noah. It's fun to read these books, and if you have any interest in this, at your leisure, check out some of these flood myths and books. They are instructive and incite the imagination to great heights. And many decades ago, I just didn't even know they existed. So the flood happened about right here, all across the world. And I argue the Great Flood was a real worldwide event. It was witnessed by eight people, and legends of it spread all over the world. Observing the Earth confirms this, though the modern institution of geology tries extraordinarily hard to move our minds away from this observation. I also claim the Great Flood so destroyed the Earth that it locked up reservoirs of water in huge basin areas, and those reservoirs of water caused geological catastrophes in order to get the Earth back to equilibrium. The Great Flood knocked the world off of equilibrium. Now the Earth is trying to get back to equilibrium after all these mountains have formed and water all around them. The Black Sea area cutting through Istanbul to the Sea of Marmara and into the Mediterranean is one such area. Uh, also, the basin of Utah, cutting through the Grand Canyon and spilling out Arizona, Nevada, and California. That's another. And the Kashmir Basin area, cutting through the Jhelum River in India and Pakistan, is a third example of areas that had chain reaction flood areas. The oldest Veda, called the Rig Veda, speaks of people witnessing the carving of the Jhelum River. Since geologists claim the Jhelum Canyon is 15 million years old, either the Indians and Pakistani history is wrong, or the geologists are wrong. And since geologists are just guessing dates and guessing variables into their equations, and can't verify accuracy, geologists' dates are not confirmed. So see my video, Who is Adam, for a bit more information on this. If we abandon the dates set by archaeologists and geologists, what we have left is the total history as shown by the periodic table of history. It is a sobering thought. In Genesis 8, the Ark of Noah rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. That's right in here. Right here. In Josephus, chapter 3 of Antiquities, Josephus records the ark rested on the top of a certain mountain in Armenia. He goes on to say the Armenians called this place Apobaterian, the place of descent, and quote, for the ark being saved in that place, its remains are shown there by the inhabitants to this day, end quote. So remember, he was writing after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in the first century A.D. Josephus says the place is called Cordians to the Chaldeans, and he says, quote, Some people carry off pieces of the bitumen which they take away and use chiefly as amulets for the averting of mischiefs. And Nicholas of Damascus in his 96th book hath a particular relation about them where he speaks thus, There is a great mountain in Armenia over Minyas called Beris, it goes on to say, that one who was carried in an ark came on shore upon the top of it, and that the remains of the timber were a great while preserved. So keep in mind these are quotations that Josephus is working from, and I just think it's fascinating to think of working from texts that are 2,500, 2,700, 2,200 years old, and that we have access to this information even now. And all this information, we now have the place of the origin, 
And from what we already know, we know the time, names of the people, and events of the start of our civilizations. If you feel so curious, please take a moment to read Genesis chapter 6 to 10. Most of the information on Noah, as far as Genesis goes, is there. And it shows how Noah is tangible and is the quintessential figure that we have access to in this modern world as having started the modern world. Now, the genealogy of Adam connects to Noah, which connects to Abraham, and which connects to the founding of the Temple of Solomon. And that is how Hebrew history and modern history intersect. So thanks for watching. It's always free to subscribe, share, thumbs up, and comment. Have a great week, and I will see you in the next video.